Are you ready to take your business to the next level? Every day there are countless books and articles that are published offering the key on how to make your business a success. It's easy to feel overwhelmed trying to keep up and run your business. That's why Deb Creer created the Business Power Hour. Keep up on the latest trends, best practices, and techniques for how to make your business a success. Let the Business Power Hour do the heavy work for you. Good morning, good morning. I am Deb Creer, and I am passionate about giving professionals the tools that they need to make themselves and their businesses as successful as possible. And today, we're going to be talking about one of those things that not a lot of people want to talk about, but we should be talking about this. Frequently, when I say that, we're talking about sales, but no, this time we're going to be talking about taxes. And But it's going to be a great discussion. And so please join me in welcoming Kelly Alexander to our program today. Welcome, Kelly. Well, thank you so much. I'm so happy to be here. Great. Well, let me tell people a little bit about you and then we will dive into this. So Kelly Alexander, the founder of Great American Tax Remedy, was inquisitive from an early age, having a thirst to make sense of a complex world and faced with a so-called incurable disease at the age of 19. She rejected the doctor's prognosis <clears throat> with a conviction, belief, and intention that is rare at any age. She cur cured herself in less than 48 hours. Later in life, she embarked on another quest to become a more empowered citizen. After a decade of research and some painful dealings with the IRS, she uncovered extraordinary secrets about the banking system, taxation, and American history. She applied these revelations to her 2014 tax return and has not owed any income taxes since. It is now her passion and calling to help liberate and empower others to do the same. So welcome, Kelly. Welcome, welcome. Thank you so much. I'm so excited to share and be here. And Great. Here. Well, tell us a little bit more about your background because it is, you know, it's, it's unusual. It is. Actually, my first career was in the fashion design world in Los Angeles. Mm-hmm. For 25 years, I worked there as a freelance pattern maker and uh, designer. Okay. And I loved doing that. It was mm -hmm. fine. I didn't see it as a lifelong pursuit. Mm -hmm. And then I wanted to learn about real estate and mm -hmm. investing in the stock market and trading options. And so I moved to Las Vegas and did that. And that's where I started learning about the Federal Reserve. Mm -hmm. They set interest rates, it's important for trading. And as I learned, I began to have little antenna go up and say, hmm, I wonder about this, mm -hmm. I wonder about that, and wanting to understand money more. And I got familiar with a book called The Creature from Jekyll Island. Mm. Uh, I don't know if your audience is familiar with it. It's an expose on the Federal Reserve. It's history, how it got mm -hmm. established in America and how it operates. The creature refers to the Federal Reserve mm -hmm. and Jekyll Island is actually a small private island off of the East Coast of America, where over a period of a few years, some top banking families and powerful banking players got together to figure out how to get a stronghold of setting up a central bank mm -hmm. in America. So great book. It's like a whodunit uh, mm -hmm. history. And uh, it's a classic on, on mm -hmm. that topic. So that book and other things just led me down a path of learning more about various remedies to our commercial world. Uh, it led to discoveries about American history that mm -hmm. are seldom taught in our educational mm -hmm. system. Uh, I, I grew to really admire and love what the founding fathers established. Mm -hmm. And just little by little by little, I, I found an extraordinary remedy for the income tax. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, I did a bunch of testing and trial and error and research and, you know, figuring it out for myself. Mm -hmm. And that was back in 2014. And um, like I said, since then, I, uh, 
I haven't owed any taxes. My life uh, philosophically and psychologically and logistically has become so much lighter and freer mm. as a result. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now that I understand how the system actually works. Mm -hmm. So that's what I'm eager to share more about with your listeners. Cool. I love it. You know, and we want to be clear, all of this are legal. We're not talking about cheating the system. We're not, no, all of this are, are legal. And, and, you know, and, and it's funny, as I was thinking about that, I was thinking there's really nothing that's at least appears to be more powerful than the IRS. I mean, that just strikes fear in everybody. You know, you, you might not be able to arrest the gangster for killing 20 people, but you can nail them on tax evasion, right? You know, right. all of these various things. And so the IRS, and it really does. I mean, you know, you, if, if you, you go home and you have an envelope and it says IRS, you're like, <laughs> <laughs> you know? yes. um, and, yes. and, you know, and now granted they have fostered that, that, but, but yeah, I mean, the IRS is very powerful. They are very pow powerful. They do have enormous authority. Mm -hmm. However, their authority does have a limit, right. a parameter, a mm -hmm. legal basis. Mm -hmm. It has a beginning and an ending point. Mm -hmm. So what I discovered actually does not come from the tax code itself. Mm -hmm. The discovery I made comes with understanding the Federal Reserve and banking law. Mm -hmm. Follow the money, mm -hmm. follow the yellow brick road. Right, right. That's often, you know, th those things are seldom, if ever, juxtaposed the connection between the Fed, the Federal mm -hmm. Reserve Banking System that we have, and its relationship to the IRS. Mm -hmm. So that's going to be something I'm going to be revealing for uh, your audience today. Mm -hmm. If it were not for the Federal Reserve, we would not have the Internal Revenue Service. The IRS exists to serve as the debt collection arm for the Federal Reserve. Ah. Our income taxes are collected to address the obligations that are incurred by our U.S. government mm -hmm. because of the money that the Federal Reserve issues to pay back and pay back at interest. Mm -hmm. All taxes collected by IRS go to service our national debt, right? which means that, you know, to prevent the U.S. government from going into default, mm -hmm. they're paying the interest on right. that debt. Because the is, debt, let's be honest, the debt is so high it's that so high. interest is all we can pay. It is currently over $27 trillion. Mm -hmm. With a T, folks, a T. a T. It's hard to wrap our heads around $1 trillion, much mm -hmm. less to seven trillion. Right. Right. So, so that's the first thing to know. Okay. Should I keep going or do you want to keep going? Well, actually let's, let's go back. Let's talk about the fed, you know, because when the country was established, mm -hmm. banks were all independent. If they even, I mean, you know, the, 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 the banking system, maybe, you know, what I should say was independent because, it, you know, that was something that, you know, it was, it was very independent. Somebody just decided, Hey, you know, I'm, I'm going to kind of start doing this, but, you know, and, and that, that really was how things were set up. It was to be independent. Um, you know, it, it, states could do their own thing, all of those various things. And then, as you said, the fed was created. So tell us a little bit more about that. Okay. So the federal reserve contrary to its name, is not a federal agency. Hmm. It is a privately held corporation. Mm -hmm. And it was delegated the authority to basically manage and set up our entire monetary policy. Mm -hmm. They set interest rates. They extend their private credit to the government and to us as consumers. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, you know, they have all this kind of regulatory right. ability and they have something called a fractional reserve lending cycle. Mm. And what that means is, as an example, when we go to our bank to deposit, say, a paycheck, mm -hmm. that's just hypothetical numbers, a thousand dollars. Right. They are required to hold 10 percent in reserve and then 
90%, they invest and in loan and exchange mm -hmm. among other member banks. And an, and an additional 90% of that deposit is made available essentially out of thin air to be used as loans for you know, business loans. Right, for whatever you need a loan for. Credit mm -hmm. cards, mortgage, mm -hmm. all those things. That expands our monetary supply from a thousand dollar deposit to now it's a thousand dollars plus ninety percent, which is another nine hundred dollars. Mm -hmm. That's nineteen hundred dollars expansion in the money. So this is one of the ways that inflation is <clears throat> eating away at the value of the already existing mm -hmm. dollars in circulation. Mm -hmm. It's considered the most unfair tax, even though it's not literally a tax, right. it, it's chipping away. Mm -hmm. so, so that's something to know about the Federal Reserve. It's really no more federal than FedEx, the shipping company. Mm -hmm. um, and so when our Congress <clears throat> wants to spend money, let's say they pass a bill and it calls for spending on a project or right they're, just, they're going to build a new highway somewhere something like that yes uh they write out a bond for the 15 billion dollars or whatever mm -hmm. amount it happens to be a bond is essentially an iou mm -hmm. it goes to the federal reserve as collateral and then the federal reserve credits the u.s treasury the 15 billion mm -hmm. Okay, so what's happened now is the government is now obligated to pay back that principal amount right. mm -hmm. plus interest. Mm -hmm. This is what creates our national debt. Mm -hmm. Right. So, yeah, so because as we said, you know, there's there's so much and and the national debt is everything. You know, it's it's not that that it's you know because a lot of people go, oh well, it's the foreign loans. It, that's part of it. You know, it is it's the the general operating budget of the federal government. Right. So it's salaries, it's the projects, it's all of those things all that go into running the government. Correct. That, that's correct. Yeah. All right. So where it gets interesting is the banking law that I mentioned where I found this remedy. It's in Title 12. That's, that's of the United States Code. Mm -hmm. And... It says that Federal Reserve notes, which is the money that we carry around in our wallet, very mm -hmm. familiar with, issued by the Federal Reserve, uh, they shall be redeemed in lawful money on demand at the U.S. Treasury in D.C. Mm -hmm. or at any Federal Reserve bank. So Federal Reserve note, this one with the red border, uh -huh. that's what we're familiar with. That's the existing dominant legal tender that mm -hmm. we're familiar with. There is another currency that exists. Mm. It existed before the Federal Reserve Act was legislated into existence in 1913. That is United States notes. This is money that our Congress is allowed by our constitution mm -hmm to issue directly into the economy without a middleman central bank, such as our Federal Reserve. Ah. That other currency, because it's issued straight from the Congress, does not need to be paid back to a third party. Right, because so they didn't no, borrow it from anybody. It's not borrowed. It's mm -hmm. a reflection of the goods and services that the people of the country generate mm -hmm. and you know all the expansion and all that. Mm -hmm. So because this U.S. note does not incur an obligation, it is exempt from income tax. Ah, because there's not that bump there. Mm -hmm. Right, right. And that's how our country operated prior to passage of the Federal Reserve Act mm -hmm. in 1913. Right. So that's well, a little over 100 years. Mm -hmm. Our country's been around for uh, 200 oh, I know, 200 plus <laughs> yeah, close, 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 250 or around there so more of our country has operated without a revenue board an irs mm -hmm. than with it right however most of us you know in this day and age all yeah. we know is mm -hmm. the, is the mm -hmm. irs right yeah so i teach people how to simply use 
this currency instead of this currency. Well, I, see, I didn't even know that, that the, the, the green bordered currency existed. So how in the heck do you get that? Okay, so. Or, or I mean, you know, and can you even, uh, you know? Well, okay. What has happened is back in the 1970s, the US Treasury put out a statement that you can find on their website that noted that Federal Reserve notes can serve the purpose in physical form of either or. So it's simply a matter of making a record of which currency you intend to use for your financial transaction. Ah. It's very simple. Mm -hmm. and, it, it, and it's related to if you receive a check before you deposit into mm -hmm. your account, it's how you endorse the back of that check. So how We're do you mean? Taught, mm -hmm. Well, we're taught to simply flip it over and sign our name. Right. That puts the money. Right. We put our account. name, we put our account number and poof, the way it goes. There, there it goes. And then we can withdraw the cash or whatever mm -hmm. we, we want to do. Those, um, the terminology that's in that United States Code 12, subsection 411, uh, there's a few little magic words in there that you use that makes your endorsement conditional, not absolute. And it's simply lawful money is redeemed on demand pursuant to 12 USC 411. And then you sign your name. That is what changes the nature of the currency that you're using from taxable to non-taxable. Mm -hmm. So it's very simple. It's understanding the legal mechanism behind mm -hmm. the money system and which money you prefer to use. Right. And again, this is legal folks. This is, you know, this is in, this is, is federal code. Yes. Yes, it is. It absolutely is. It's valid to this day and they cannot eliminate it. Then there's hmm. reasons why. Mm -hmm. There's historical reasons uh, that might be a little, a little too much information. At this yeah, a little call. If somebody's interested, they can can look right. that up. So now, could I go into a bank and tell them that's the 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 money that I want? So you know, you you tell as opposed them. to putting my little card in the little ATM machine. Okay, so. The, the key transaction is making deposits into your account. Mm -hmm. When it comes to withdrawals, you don't need to do anything different. You've already redeemed the money going in. Ah, So there's no extra step on mm -hmm. the withdrawal end. You pay your bills the same way. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, all that's the same. Mm -hmm. So if you asked for United States notes, they cannot physically give it to you and it is completely unnecessary hmm. all you do is you let them know mm -hmm. now, right so it's not like they have two piles and they pick from this pile or that pile right right much of the money that's moving around in our current era is happening electronically mm -hmm. uh, writing checks has become right. you know much less common uh, many people receive direct deposit mm -hmm. at their job mm -hmm. or if they own a business and they have clients that pay them with credit cards, their credit card merchant receives that money and then the merchant will deposit mm -hmm. into the account based on an authorization between the merchant and the business mm -hmm. owner. So those authorizations are the way that we um, document those types of transactions when it's not a physical check. Right. So, right. so that's that. Yes. Y you know, and I, I, I don't think I'm old enough to remember when the Fed, when, when you know, money that, that came from the Fed um, was backed by gold or silver, um, you know, and, and now we don't have those. I mean, every once in a while, you'll find a silver note and it's like, oh, okay. Um, yeah. You know, yes, and, and be, you know, yeah, they just, and, and uh, yeah, I think it was, I don't know when they stopped doing that. Um, but I, I, if I'm remembering my history right, it is simply because there's not that much gold or silver. You know, they, they can't back it any longer because that just, that doesn't exist. So yes, from 1913 to 1933, the first 20 years of the Federal Reserve's existence, 
Federal Reserve notes and gold and silver were easily and frequently exchanged mm -hmm. one for the other back and forth. Right. In 1933, during the Great Depression, mm -hmm. Oops, uh, somebody's FDR, looking for you. <laughs> Um, yeah, during the Depression, FDR uh, was faced with actually a form of a bankruptcy that the country was going through because mm. of the Depression. Right. And that's when the Federal Reserve note could no longer be exchanged for gold and silver. Mm -hmm. He put out an executive order uh, requiring the citizens to turn in their gold or bullion mm -hmm. or mm -hmm. gold certificates for Federal Reserve notes that would no longer be exchangeable for gold. Hmm. So that was the first big shift away from the gold standard, 1933. Mm -hmm. From that point, moving into um, uh, uh, 1971, President Nixon closed the gold window for foreign transactions hmm. because the U.S. dollar is the world's reserve currency. Mm -hmm. The foreign nations could exchange U.S. dollars for gold, but the nation itself could not. Hmm. And that's what Nixon ended mm -hmm. in the 70s. Uh, back in 1963, that's when uh, President Kennedy, uh, he issued silver certificates. And mm -hmm. I've got I've got one. Mm -hmm. And they uh, look exactly the same, but somewhere on there, it does say silver certificate. At the very top. Oh, yes, there it is. Silver certificate. Yep. Yes, this is not a Federal Reserve form of money. This is that umbrella term lawful money that's mm -hmm. referred to in the Title 12. Mm -hmm. The last time these were issued was in 1963. Mm. So also for people to know is besides something like a silver certificate, our coins are not Federal Reserve money. Hmm. Quarters, dimes, nickels, mm -hmm. pennies. Those are still the congressional money, the mm -hmm. lawful money. And when I use the word lawful, it does not mean that Federal Reserve notes are not lawful. Right. Of mm -hmm. course they are. It's mm -hmm. just, it's a different nature, a different mm -hmm. species of money. Right. Right. So, so that's, that's that. Mm -hmm. um, all right. So, so then we have the IRS the that, IRS that gets involved in all this. So how is, you know, because the IRS is, I think, right. A government institution. So then how do they tie in to, to all of this? Yes. There's, there's discussion about that, that it's a quasi agency. It is it also has private elements to it, like the Federal Reserve. Mm -hmm. Those are technicalities that, again, aren't really important right. to go into for this conversation. Kind of like they subcontract some stuff. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> there, there's things going on. Mm -hmm. But what's happened is there is so much indoctrination mm -hmm. about our tax system. You know, we need to pay our fair share mm -hmm. is commonly heard. Mm -hmm. Death and taxes are the only absolutes. Mm -hmm. Okay, so this conditioning to me is, I don't know if your listeners are familiar with something called Kansas City Shuffle. Mm -mm. Well, it, I, I shouldn't say I'm not. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's, a, it's a technique of causing people to focus on an area mm -hmm. and keep their attention in one place Meanwhile, something somewhere else is really oh, going on. Oh, it's the on. cups moving back and forth. Yes, something mm -hmm. else is going on in the background. And I don't want to go as far as to say that we're being lied to, but what we're being told is very incomplete. Mm -hmm. And because of that incompleteness, people come to the conclusion, well, there's no way out. You know, yeah, I have to it. pay taxes. I have to do it. Mm -hmm. I find it interesting that when we usually as a teenager go and get our very first job, mm -hmm. typically at a fast food restaurant, mm -hmm. we don't get a letter mailed to us that says, well, welcome to the. Yeah, welcome to being a grown up. 
<laughs> yes, uh, you're now required to pay and file income taxes. Mm -hmm. Have you ever gotten a letter like that? No. I never got a letter mm -mm. like that. But I remember getting that check and going, wait a minute, where'd that money go? <laughs> yes. Yes. The conditioning is so powerful now mm -hmm. that generations have gone on that people voluntarily file their first tax return. It's not mandatory, but once you file the first one, you are now under contract with the ah. IRS. Yes. So then it's, and so that's where it, so then you have to continue filing. You can't just then, go, oh, I changed my mind. I changed my mind. No, that mm -hmm. doesn't work. Mm -hmm. And that's what they, what they mean when they say that taxes are voluntary. Mm -hmm. Many IRS commissioners, Congress people, um, you know, politicians will let it slip that yes, the, the, the taxation is voluntary, but then they move on and they don't tell you anything more and then it's confusing right yeah because if you don't pay them there's penalties right oh yes right yes and there's yeah there's ways to get into trouble that, that we've all heard about and mm -hmm. those stories get amplified and magnified and mm -hmm. repeated again and again and again so people are terrified mm -hmm. so my goal is to unterrify people mm -hmm. understand that the irs has authority to tax those that use Federal Reserve notes. Mm -hmm. That's an enormous authority, but since there's another currency, it's not absolute. Mm -hmm. Right. All right. So there's that. Um, yeah. Uh, so the process is actually very simple. Mm -hmm. um, declaring and making a record of which currency you want to use. Mm -hmm. If you work with me, then I train you on how to go from being that nervous. Uh, the IRS is going to get me. A mm -hmm. satisfied, mm -hmm. fearful taxpayer to having the confidence to apply the law mm -hmm. um, and to, from there, show it on your tax return mm -hmm. so that the IRS can recognize it. Right, because you're still filing your taxes. You still file a mm -hmm. tax return. Yes. However, it gets much simpler. Hmm. You no longer need to wade through 86,000 pages of tax code that mm -hmm. keep changing and growing year after year mm -hmm. after year to find a deduction mm -hmm. to lower your tax liability. Mm -hmm. It's unnavigable. Even the most brilliant of CPAs cannot master right. 86,000. There's just too pages. much information. Mm -hmm. It's too much. They specialize in an area of the code. Mm -hmm. So my system simplifies all of that because you no longer need the tax code. You rely mm -hmm. on the banking law. Mm. I love it. You know, yeah. and we'll talk at the end how people get in, in contact with you. Sure. But, you know, there and there are other things. I mean, I remember, and now I've been paying taxes for a while, but I remember one year I got a refund check for a penny, a penny. Uh, and I saved it for years. I see it somewhere, but, but, but yeah, you know, it was, and, and that's in, in a lot of ways, that's how it's supposed to work too, because, you know, we shouldn't be loaning the government money and therefore getting a refund. Right. And we certainly don't want to have to pay in, in April. And so, yeah. And I don't know how I did that, that one year, I, mean, I don't know what I did, but yeah, I got a penny. It really was. It was the funniest thing in the world because I'm like, there's something wrong here. Now, clearly I knew, I actually, I figured they wouldn't send a check um, and because, I mean, yeah, it costs a lot more than a penny to, to do the check. Process it. Yeah. I know. I mean, that was, but, but yeah, because yeah, when I submitted my taxes, I mean, I knew there was, there was going to be a penny, but you know, there, there are certainly lots of ways that people, you know, can take advantage of, and we're not going to talk about it during this program because that's, that's not the goal, but of, of other legal ways that you do your deductions, that you take advantage. Um, you know, there's obviously it's an election year. And so there've been a, a lot of discussions about taxes and that the really wealthy don't pay. You know, the wealthy know what to do to, to, and I'm not saying avoid, but the, the wealthy know what to do to, to take advantage of a lot of these things, um, you know, and so yes. it's not that they're avoiding, there probably are some, yes, but you know, they they just know what to do in order to 
pay less. Now they're still paying millions. I mean, you know, if you're a, 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 a gazillionaire, you're still paying taxes um, to some degree. I mean, whether it's state, whether it's it's whatever, but you know, they they know how to take advantage of the various tax laws to reduce that liability. There we go. That was the statement I was looking for. <laughs> Yes, I mean, the tax code exists to be taken advantage of. Mm -hmm. That's what it's for. Right. It's an incentive, you know, mm -hmm. for people to do mm -hmm. certain activities that are, are perceived mm -hmm. at least to benefit the economy mm -hmm. or whatever. However, the well, the ultra wealthy, like there, there was just a news article a few months ago. Um, uh, I believe it's Jeff Bezos, mm -hmm. owner of Amazon. Who, who came out and said, I paid no income taxes. Right. He's one of the wealthiest mm -hmm. men on the planet. Mm -hmm. Now, I don't know for a fact, but I'm pretty confident that these ultra wealthy people, they have enough money to turn to lobbyists that mm -hmm. go to the Congress and create tax code and tax right. laws mm -hmm. that benefit these, mm -hmm. these people. Mm -hmm. Oh, sure. And so- you know, that's, that's mm -hmm. why it keeps expanding and growing. Mm -hmm. Right. You know, 86 plus pages. Thousand pages. I know. Uh, yeah. I mean, it's, it, it's, it's, it, you know, it, it inches. I mean, it's like three or four right. inches by the, you know, if you were to print it, I'm pretty sure nobody really actually prints it any longer except yeah. the IRS. Um, but yeah. You know, so, you know, you, you talked about at the start that, you know, this, this money is you know that they that they're collecting is how the government functions so if we figure out how to decrease it how does the government still function all right so that's another part of the condition we hear it all the time your tax dollars at work right i mean they make signs by the construction areas and all those things yes. your tax dollars at work at work as i said the, all the money collected through the income tax goes to service the unnecessary national debt. Mm -hmm. There are a list. There is a list that I have that I'm going to slightly, you know, bring up mm -hmm. of all the other taxes that we pay. Right. Over, mm -hmm. over and above the. Holy schmoly. Let's see. We're on page four, five. <laughs> something, something like that. And this list grows mm -hmm. continually. Things like sales taxes, mm -hmm. gasoline taxes, mm -hmm. property taxes, licenses and permit right. fees, all of these things, these are the taxes that are paying for the government services that we as taxpayers mm -hmm. expect. It's not the income tax. Mm. Hmm. It's yeah, just, and, and like I said, everybody still pays taxes because we buy gas, we buy groceries. Um, we you have know, a cell there's phone. yeah, we have I mean, utility bills, yeah, yeah, on and on and on. We yeah. register our cars, mm -hmm. right? All of those things. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we we I'm I'm in Georgia, and we have a thing called SPLOST, which we vote on. You know, and and it's special use one time tax or something like that. I forget what SPLOST, but but those are actually very specific. So you'll have like a SPLOST tax for um you know a certain stretch of road construction or you know things like that and so you know okay well if we vote for this we get that but um right. but yeah i mean there's there's like you said there's lots and lots of taxes and uh, you know we we laugh about amazon or you know and, and i mean they're still paying taxes um you know there's there's you there's they're they're certainly collecting them for me um you know and and yeah. but it's interesting because we and we see this where you know, companies function in certain states because there's tax incentives, um, sure. you know, and, and, you know, here in Georgia, we have a lot, it's, it's the, where the, the second most uh, place where, where movies and, and television programs are filmed um, next to, to obviously Los Angeles. And that's because of the tax incentives, um, you yeah. know, and, and, and there's some other things, but it's the tax incentives that, that are here. And, and so <clears throat> clearly that, you know, they're, they're taking advantage of, that legal um, system, right? You know, they're not saying, "Oh, we're not going to pay those taxes," and not pay. You know, they, right. they've been told you don't have to pay those taxes. Yeah, those are perfectly legitimate activities. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. So, what's really interesting about this this process that I've uncovered is that not only is it a benefit for us as individual taxpayers. When we do this, we are also simultaneously helping our government lower that national debt. Now, how does that work? 
Okay, so when we do this redemption mm -hmm. from that Title 12, here's mm -hmm. a straight from the law book, mm -hmm. Title 12, 411, and we redeem a Federal Reserve note into a United States note, mm -hmm. and that United States note is not taxable because there's no obligation attached to it. After, you know, the course of any given year, all of those notes that are redeemed reduce the national debt because the Federal Reserve must now surrender an equivalent amount of the bonds that it holds as collateral mm. back to the U.S. Mm -hmm. Treasury. So that takes the national debt from 27 trillion down to 26 point <laughs> eight, eight trillion. Right, because this obviously isn't something that's used a lot. Mm -hmm. Right. It's not a lot because people don't know. It's mm -hmm. strictly a matter of awareness. And mm -hmm. that's where I come in. I'm here to let people know, look, there is another way. Mm -hmm. The way that our founding fathers organized mm -hmm. and established America to function from the very beginning. Mm -hmm. That's what I'm doing. Right. My life is really to honor what they have done. Mm -hmm. Right. And and they did set it up for independence. I mean, you know, yes, it, it, you know, we, oh, it, it's stretching a bit for me to go back to my American history classes. But you know, I remember, you know, they talked about, you know, the, the one of the biggest things was that we were that that you know, people here thought that they were paying too many taxes to the king. Right. Um, of England. And, and so that was, was the whole thing was they were wanting to free themselves from paying those taxes. Right. And, you know, there's a, there's lawful taxes and mm -hmm. valid and, mm -hmm. you know, taxes that are mandated by our constitution. Mm -hmm. That's all fine and good. Right. The income tax happens not to be one of them. Mm -hmm. Right. You know, and Clearly, you know, the government has to function, therefore the government yes. needs money. And yes. it's a totally different discussion for, for a different day as to what that level would be, um, you know, because some people obviously want far more state control where, you know, and, and yeah, I mean, that, that really is a very different discussion, but the government still has to take in money. I mean, or have the government, um, you know, and, and so, you know, yeah, that's, that's, that's what this list is for. Right. Right. And, and yeah, I mean, there, and there are so many taxes. It, it's funny. There's a, a commercial running here in Atlanta that is uh, for internet. And it is saying, you know, if you are, if you have your internet through your phone company, you're paying too much. Okay, sure. And then they say, because of all the taxes and fees, you know, and, and, and I mean, that's and now have I checked that now I'm pretty sure, you know, they're, I mean, they wouldn't be saying that if it's not at least somewhat true. I mean, you know, we can all, you know, but, um, but yeah, I mean, there's the, uh, through, you know, through the various communication and telecom and, and all of those, I mean, there's a lot of taxes and fees. Uh, you know, you stop and you look at that line or those lines on a lot of your bills and you're like, holy schmoly. Yeah. You have, I mean, you know, it's not like I can look at my cable bill and say, I'm not going to pay that extra 50 bucks. I still have to pay that 50 bucks. Right. Right. It's true. It's true. Yeah. So, well, actually, I don't have to. I, you know, I could say no, I'm not going to pay it, but then they're going to say no, we're not going to provide you service. service. I mean, exactly. that's you know, right. <laughs> so. Of course, yeah. So now, Kelly, one of the things that I was wondering about when when we're talking about this is what about when something like Bitcoin comes along, where people have just created out of thin air, if that's my understanding, this new financial system or this new currency so how in the heck does something like that work okay so i am actually a big advocate of the cryptocurrency mm -hmm. now to be fair there's a lot of scammers right it's easy to be taken advantage mm -hmm. of but the concept behind bitcoin the blockchain mm -hmm. it's a way to decentralize our monetary system, mm -hmm. as opposed to our Federal Reserve, which is centralized, mm -hmm. top-down control. What Bitcoin has started to me is a phenomenal uh, path mm -hmm. to liberation for the world. Mm -hmm. it's, t it's obviously still in its infancy. You know, it's going through all these gyrations and, you know, it, it's a completely different mindset. You become your own bank and you mm -hmm. need to secure you know, the money that you hold in these uh, cryptocurrencies, but I, I support it 
very much from a philosophical point of view. Mm -hmm. I think it's, it's a way out of this control system that we are living under. Right. And of course, the government doesn't like it because no, you know, there's, there's, there's all that money that right. you don't have, um, yeah. you know, and, and, you know, and so it's, and, and, you know, I, I, I know a minuscule amount about it. I mean, you know, there's, there's just not a ton that I know about it, but, but it is so interesting because people really did just decide, Hey, we're going to do this. Um, you know, and, and it, it's the same concept in a lot of ways as say bartering, you know, you're, you're trading a service Mm-hmm. and not currency. So they just created a currency on their own. Well, during the days of the colonists, you know, mm-hmm. before we went through our uh, revolutionary mm-hmm. war, the colonies issued what they called their own script. Right. And it was paper money mm-hmm. and it was traded and it was, it was their form of money mm-hmm. without a central bank. There was no interest. There was nothing to be paid right. back. There was no beggars, mm-hmm. tramps, unemployed. Mm-hmm. Everybody thrived. And when King of England started figuring out, well, you know. Yeah, wait a minute. Oh, I'm missing oh, out. I'm getting those hey, chickens. wait a minute. I'm missing mm-hmm. out. Mm-hmm. It changed. And that's when they added those stamp acts and mm-hmm. all those taxes and all that stuff. Um, and then that's when there were things like unemployment mm-hmm. and people on the streets homeless, all these things, the money, unfortunately, everything leads back to the money. Right. It's set up Mm -hmm. to work. Yeah. So I see Bitcoin as a a derivative of what the colonists did. Mm -hmm. Yes, it's digital. Mm -hmm. There's a technology to the blockchain that makes it unique. Right. It makes it um, anonymous and consensus. It, It cannot be manipulated all this creative thing like the, what the federal reserve mm-hmm. does this fraction reserve lending process that expand, you know, that cannot happen on mm-hmm. a blockchain. Right. So, yeah. Yeah. You know, and, and I mean, it, it, it's funny because to me, and it's kind of like monopoly money, <laughs> you know, it's, it's play money, but it's not, um, you know, and, and well, so, you know. it's based on supply and demand mm-hmm. because it's, because it's limited quantity, the mm-hmm. cryptocurrency, that's what allows it to grow in value. Mm-hmm. As more people start to realize its utility, mm-hmm. uh, its scarcity, mm-hmm. um, its usability, these are the things that give it merit mm-hmm. and give it value. Right. Yeah. I mean, you could have a million dollars in Bitcoin, but if there's nowhere to spend it, Hey, yo, it's it, and and so that's that's the hitch right now is, you know, the the places where you can spend it. I mean, you're not going to go down to to you know your local grocery store, and and show them your phone and say, okay, deduct you know a thousand Bitcoin. You, you could, but they're going to take their groceries back, um, you know, because it's not currency to them. And and so that yeah. is, of course, the drawback right now is, if that's going to happen. And and there are businesses that accept it. Um, there are, you know, and I mean, more more obviously time. it wouldn't be working. Um, yeah. But um, but yeah, I mean, it's just it, it's it's you know, it's just, I I I found it fascinating that people just went, hey, let's create our own currency, and they did, and they um, did, you yeah. know, and and then of course what happened was other people said, well, we're going to create our own. Oh, we're going to create our own, and that caused all sorts of problems. That's that's where the the problems came in. Well, yes and no. I mean. The idea, the concept, like I said, has merit. There's just, there's a lot of things to be worked out mm-hmm. and sorted through and all of that. But um, yeah, I, I, I think it's an incredible development mm-hmm. in the evolution of money mm-hmm. on Earth and you know, the way that people can exchange and, and do things without the top-down control. Mm-hmm. Right. Well, and it does make it something that is worldwide. Um, you know, and, and so you're not dealing with the, 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 you know, a Euro or, you know, all, you know, all uh, Canadian money, right. It's just, you know, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, you know, and, and so that's, that's the interesting part too, is it, it really is something that's worldwide. And, and I think that's where things get confusing too, is 
when we have all these different currencies, you know, it's like, okay, well now what's the Canadian dollar today as compared to the U S dollar. And, um, you know, and, 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 you know, and then the fed again, here, we're going to circle back around to them. They get involved, um, yeah. you know, and, 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 you know, clearly we hear about the fed a lot and we, and, and the chair, which I'm drawing a total blank on the fed chair's name right now. Oh, it's your own power. Yes. That's it. You know, I mean, that's that person, when that person speaks, <laughs> It's, you know, and, and I mean, you know, you, 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 they, they cut into, to your, your television programs. I mean, especially if it's something major, um, mm-hmm. but yeah, I mean that, and, and it's, you know, it, it's not him on his own, um, you know, he's, he's doing sure. a decision that's based by the, the, you know, their board, but, but yeah, I mean, you know, it's like, oh my gosh, the, you know, the fed is lowering interest rates and I'm, you know, and, 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 you know, it's, it, it's like, wait a minute. And it's what you've been saying is, you know, we all go, how did they get that much power? Yeah. Yeah. Well, we gave it to them. You know, let's just be honest. And, yeah, and, that's you true. Know, and, and, yeah. and I'm using the Royal we, because, you know, people have different philosophies about this, sure. but, um, sure. but yeah, you know, it was, it, they, you know, it, it, there was nothing that came in and said, okay, they now get to do this. It's not like there was a law that was written. I don't think that said, well, no. okay. Yeah. No, that is the Federal Reserve Act. Right. Oh, okay. That, that's the body. That's the legislation. Okay. That got passed to our Congress. Okay. Yeah. So there is a law that says. Okay. So sorry, Mr. Yeah. Powell. Um. But yeah, I mean, it, it's interesting. I actually have their website open. Um. And there's three, five people currently on their board, and two of them are women. I'm like, oh my gosh, what the heck yeah. happened here? Um. Yeah. But um. But yeah, I mean, it's just the the Fed is interesting. You know and. And then, you know, I'm, I'm talking about Bitcoin and, and things like that. I'm, I'm a huge science fiction fan. And so, you know, I, I love it when they have things like, I mean, Star Trek, Star Trek, Star, you know, and they talk about the fact that there's no currency, you're not paid, um, you know, and, and, you know, and I mean, it's just, it, it gets, it gets complicated because people want to be paid because we value what we're doing based on how much money and, and all of those various things. And, you know, we want the neighbors to see that we just went and got a new Mercedes, you know, right. whatever it is. I mean, currency money, I, I don't see money going away. I mean, no. yeah, no. I mean, there's just, and, and, and part of that is that trade says now, maybe it does go back in, in some cases to bartering. Um, you know, I, I interviewed a, a woman on the program and it's been, you know, probably at least a year ago where she has a legal, it is a legal bartering system. And I mean, I just, again, I found it fascinating because, you know, you would say things like, um, you know, or I'm, I might say, okay, I, you know, will can develop a website with five hours worth of work and you will get 10 pages, whatever, you know, so I'm very descriptive as to what it is. And the value of that is X. Mm-hmm. And I really want to go on vacation. So somebody who has like a B and B that needs a new website says, okay, I will trade you a week in my B and B for your website development. And her company is the kind of that, that trading process. Okay. I just thought that was fascinating um, that, that people would do that because it was like, wait a minute, wait, I wouldn't have to pay for my hotel. And she said, you know, it's, you have to be very clear. So it can't just be, you know, hey, I'm, I want to go stay in a hotel because the, or, you know, at, at B&B, because the B&B is going to say, okay, you get five nights, you get this. So, you know, right. they it obviously it has to be very clear. My understanding is that even with barter, let's say you were to mm-hmm. undergo an IRS audit, mm-hmm. there's a value. They, they will, mm-hmm. they can, and they have in some cases mm-hmm. taxed barter transactions. Right. Mm-hmm. And that's because unless the underlying presumption that you are, um, w- the presumption being that you're using the Federal Reserve money, mm-hmm. even if it's a barter, it has Federal Reserve money value associated right. mm-hmm. with it, that it can still be taxable mm-hmm. as a commodity or whatever. So I don't know, obviously, about this woman's business, mm-hmm. God bless her, but it's something to be careful about mm-hmm. right it's always good to break that presumption mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. yeah you know and and that's where it's good to have a good cpa and and all of those things and you know and you know we tell people when you're starting out in business barter might be a good way to to do things sure. um you know because you you don't have a lot of money so you're gonna yeah. you're gonna trade for for sure. things and and you know and and when i've talked to cpas they have said keep 
track. You know, that, that is the big thing is, is to really just keep track so that you know that you bartered $10,000 worth of goods and services. And then we go from there. Um, but, but yeah, you know, it's, it's, you know, and, and of course bartering is the oldest form, you know, you, you, you went right. to the doctor and, and you paid him with a chicken. <laughs> you know? yeah. yeah. It's just, it's just physical money. It's easier mm-hmm. to make transactions. Mm-hmm. Happen, so, right. Yeah. For, I, for some reason, I just, I had a, a friend, he has passed away, but he was an attorney in a very small town and, and, you know, people bartered quite a bit and he got in one case, a rock. Now it is a big rock. You know, it's, it's the centerpiece of a big garden and you know, weighs several tons. I mean, it is a big rock, but yeah, he got a rock. <laughs> cool. yeah. All right. And so, but yeah, cool. you just. Well, yeah, what more is one of the things, and and you had said, you know, you need to declare that you're doing, how and who are you declaring? Uh, You create a piece of paper, okay, whether it's your check, Mm -hmm. your direct deposit authorization, a wire Mm -hmm. transfer instruction, or an ACH Mm -hmm. uh, authorization, Mm -hmm. you just put the same wording as if you were endorsing a check on that authorization paperwork it's Mm. it's really simple Mm -hmm. it's it's the mindset that's more of the the leap of faith for Mm -hmm. people that are just learning about something like this Mm -hmm. and they think well this must this sounds too good to be true right Mm -hmm. you know and i understand that i mean it's a is my first thoughts like well well and and as you said we were brought up to pay taxes i mean you know that was just you know you're like now okay i'm babysitting and i earned this me oh yeah what do you mean i have to pay money on my babysitting Mm -hmm. right right but you know there was an era when people believed the earth was flat and if they Mm -hmm. sailed too far in the ocean they'd fall off you know there was a point in time when before the Wright brothers mastered right. flight. We couldn't fly. We mm-hmm. couldn't fly. Mm-hmm. Before 1913, there was no IRS. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, our cell phones, mm-hmm. these are more powerful than I the know. technology that mm-hmm. got us on the moon. Mm-hmm. Who would have thought? Right. right. In, in our ago. lifetime. I mean, that's the amazing lifetime. thing. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So, you know, that's part of my role as mm-hmm. a coach. And a guide is to really empower people mm-hmm. to show them how to restore mm-hmm. power that they have had all along right. and realize, mm-hmm. you know, the process is simple. It's, it's unlearning and relearning mm-hmm. and training yourself, you know, remembering, okay, I got to do this. I got to do yeah. this. Yeah. And, and yeah, ultimately it's actually much simpler. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I mean, you know, it's like with anything, when you get into the habit of it, you just, you just do it. Mm-hmm. Right. right. So, you know, Kelly, this does sound complicated, but you, you, you help people with this. So tell people how they would find you. So I have a, a landing page or mm-hmm. a website at www.mytaxremedy.com. Mm-hmm. And on there, there is an interview uh, one of my very first interviews that I did mm-hmm. when I was starting to teach this. And I have put together an introductory little booklet that's a free download. Okay. It goes into some of the things that mm-hmm. we've spoken of here today, but with more detail, some, you know, graphics and different mm-hmm. things in there. And I recommend, you know, just start learning, mm-hmm. start taking a step, getting familiar mm-hmm. and, you know, before, before I discovered this process, I did something with, with IRS tax filing that was exotic. It had some merit to it, but it mm-hmm. ultimately was flawed. Oops. Yes. And I, it got me into trouble mm-hmm. with IRS. So mm-hmm. I have lived through mm-hmm. uh, a, a very uncomfortable mm-hmm. situation and it was right. part of my learning curve. Mm-hmm. And um so I, I know firsthand what, you know, the fear and the reservation, mm-hmm. the scariness right. of standing up to that organization. Mm-hmm. Uh, but it's really not hard once mm-hmm. you understand how everything connects and what the law is and how to apply it, mm-hmm. you know? Right. 
and and you just said the key words what the law is and how to apply it you know right. we're not saying okay we're gonna you know we're we're, we're not gonna pay taxes by just you know hiding the money no 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 in fact uh, when I coach people on doing their tax return, we are completely transparent with mm-hmm. IRS. Right. We hold nothing back. We mm-hmm. do not, not declare. We add additional documentation to support the legal basis for what mm-hmm. we elected to do. And so, you know, and you know what? Most IRS agents are not familiar with this either. Right. And at sometimes they'll see a tax return, such as the ones that I teach people to do. Mm-hmm. And they'll go, well, on the face of it, this, this looks frivolous. Right. And in fact, there came a period of time after my third or fourth year of doing this, when I started praying that the IRS would challenge me. Mm-hmm. So you could show them this is the way it works. Mm-hmm. Yes. And I got my, my prayer granted over a year ago, about a mm-hmm. year and a half. I got a frivolous filing notice for my 2018 tax return. Mm -hmm. I love it. A frivolous filing notice. (laughs) Well, that's what it's called. Uh People are are worried about audits, which I understand those can be very, but a frivolous filing notice comes with an automatic five to $10,000 civil penalty fine. Oh, so it's not frivolous. No, 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 no. It's a big deal. Mm -hmm. And if you don't comply with what they hope you will bite on the bait to do and be intimidated mm-hmm. by mm-hmm. that within 30 days right uh then that's what you're faced with this mm-hmm. big fine so i submitted paperwork mm-hmm. and never heard from them again i never got a phone call i never got a letter so then you're thinking oh uh. <laughs> well, no no they have a a tool now that you can create an account, right? Oh, so you know that they got it. Mm -hmm. Oh, I know. Oh, I sent it registered mail, Mm -hmm. right? right. Firm delivery. And on my accounts, it showed 2018 zero balance owed. And I Mm -hmm. keep checking and, you know, months and months went by. Mm -hmm. zero balance owed. I got them. Mm -hmm. They, they knew, and you know, the, the revenue agent or the whoever it was, mm-hmm. sent the reviewee stuff. person, mm-hmm. they didn't know they were just mm-hmm. doing a good faith check. Right. And they mm-hmm. saw something that looked, mm-hmm. it was different, different. Mm-hmm. And they tested me. Mm-hmm. And that's what government will do. They will right. test right. us to see mm-hmm. what do we actually mm-hmm. know? How much do we understand? Mm-hmm. It's not their job to, to inform us. It's mm-hmm. really our job as citizens mm-hmm to be self-empowered. That's one of the Achilles heels of a republic. Mm -hmm. It requires a very informed citizenry to make it function the way it's designed. And it requires constant vigilance and education. Mm -hmm. So the citizen is operating on real knowledge, not conditioning. Right. You know, and, and of course, that's the important thing about all of this. We need to be educated. Yes. You know, even if you decide I'm going to just continue the way th- things always have been. Right. You made an educated decision, you know, and, and so that's that's the important thing is to educate yourself about this and other things. I mean, you know, there's there's all sorts of things that happen that we need to be, you know, the big yeah. thing now is everybody's like, what the heck is the electoral calen- uh, college? Right. Educate yourself on it, folks. Just don't say it's good or it's bad know why it functions the, the way it is. Um, you know, and, and so that's the thing is, is, you know, we always should be educating ourselves because it changes. I mean, you know, that's it that, changes, you know, yes, the, yeah, you know, and, and it changes at everything from, you know, your local level all the way up. And so, you know, just keep up on those things, mm-hmm. you know, it, just to make sure that, that if anything, that you're doing things the way you're supposed to. Yeah, you know, right. that's you know, and and so that's that's the thing. We well, oh my gosh, Kelly, we can't hold our government accountable unless we know right. Yeah, how to hold yeah, it. we can't say you can't do that if we can't right. then say why you why? can't do that, yeah. um, or you can do that. I mean, you know, it's sure. yeah, you know, both ways. So, oh my gosh, Kelly, one more time, where people can find you? Yes, www.mytaxremedy.com. Perfect. And I have an email, very similar, info at mytaxremedy.com. I love it. I love it. Well, do you have any final thoughts for us? 
Um, I have we yes. covered everything? <laughs> yes, I do. I just want to let people know that this process that I coach people on, it's not about getting away with something sneaky, mm -hmm. even though it feels like, ooh, right. mm -hmm. you know, it's really about understanding the system that we have and actually helping our government deal with its national debt. Perfect. So it's I a win-win. It. It's a win-win. Right. It is. It is. Yeah. Well, this has been a fascinating discussion. Um, I am Deb Creer. I've been talking with Kelly Alexander. And until next time, everyone have a great day. Tune in for our next program for even more trends, best practices, and techniques for how to make your business a success. The Business Power Hour, hosted by Deb Creer, is proud to be part of the C-Suite Network.